good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. Today we'll be reviewing Light Fair 2014, which was held in Las Vegas. I know many of you could not be there. Some of us had to stay back and get work done, and others had a good time over there, and others had to do a lot of work while they were over there. So whichever category you fell into, we're going to today cover the Light Fair 2014 Innovation Award winners, some great new products coming in the market. A couple of photos from the show. You know, it is the 25th anniversary of Light Fair this past 2014 in June. And without further ado, let's get started. The first product category that was at the Light Fair Innovation Awards that we're going to speak about this morning was in LED and OLED chips and modules. The runner-ups, the top three came in. Very interesting product by a company called American Bright. They have a 10-watt high-powered chip on board module that runs direct off of 120 volts. The next in the top three was a product by Lumintex, which is a more or less a color tuning LED module. Very interesting from 1,650 lumens all the way up to 6,000K. And and the winner for that category for LED, OLED chips was the Lexion COB Crisp White. This LED was designed to address retail applications where, you know, like white linens might look a little yellowish. This is a very high 90 CRI chip that offers a very, very warm saturation for crisp white colors. And as I said, particularly in retail. I'm very excited to see the types of products that MaxLight and others are going to build around that product. The next product category was ballast transformers, LED drivers, and systems and kits. There were a little good 20, 25 submittals into this product category. The winner in that product category was Osram. They have what they call their programmable two-dim outdoor LED power supply, IP66 rated, so direct weather, 0 to 10 LED dimming built in. Great idea, great idea. The next category for the Innovation Awards was non-luminous components. This is a focus on things like hardware, solar, shades, things like that. The top three was microsystems. They have what they call a cassette shade system that works for daylight harvesting systems. There was also deep core daylighting. They have a product that with just a two-inch hole through the roof, a two-inch penetration, I'm so sorry, a two-foot penetration, of course, they can light up daylight up to 5,000, square feet using a culminated beam of sunshine using daylight piping. So very interesting product. The winner in that category, however, was the Dow Corning Corporation. They're multiple white reflector silicone. I had the pleasure to work with a prototype of this very same silicone for lighting about 10, 15 years ago. And let me tell you, the reflectance on this is over 99%. Fantastic product. We did not go forward at the time due to pricing. It was very, very expensive. It just was not cost effective. But today, with modern manufacturing processes, this can be micro molded. So very economical, very exciting. Next product category was the research, publication, software, measuring devices, these kinds of things. The winner in this category was the IES white paper on recommended practices for daylighting buildings. So kudos to them. Next product category for us was that we are going to look at was building controls, building controls, building integration, site automation, distribution systems, and the like. The winner in that category was a product by Schneider Electric, a software called Energy Insight, and it's a complete web-based energy solution where you're on top of what is consuming what at what times, great reporting, real-time controls. Again, very exciting product. This is a great age to be in lighting, let me say. I'm going to jump over to the Technical Innovation Award. This is a prestigious award. This is not out of any particular category, but across all of the submittals. And the Technical Innovation Award for 2014 is Daikon C-Lux T80 LED track light system. It is 90 CRI, 80 watts of LED, and you can achieve dimming, and has a slew of accessories. I did not have the chance to visit the booth at the show. I just couldn't get to it, so I can't speak more to it, but there was a lot of buzz about it. Now, the next category, which is really the premier product for the show, is the most innovative of the year. And the most innovative of the year went to the Acuity company today, the Acuity company with their product, which is called Open. I did see the product. It is quite beautiful. It's an open Luminaire utilizes constructive occlusive to produce soft, comfortable illumination. Now, occlusive, I had to look that word up, and, you know, I, I, I urge you to do that. This is an official statement.
statement from acuity. That word has its roots in dentistry, but there is a reference of a obsoleted word, occlusion, which says more or less full volumetric of light. And I think it's a great name, open, because it is an open fixture, and it's almost magical how it illuminates without any particular light source visible. And uh, kudos to Acuity for this type of product. As I mentioned earlier, Light Fair is on its 25th year straight. Next year, in 2015, Light Fair will be in New York City, Jacob Javits Center, 26th year. Hope at least all you East Coasters can join us. Here's a couple of pictures, some familiar faces that you might recognize. This is on and around the Max Light booth. Now, the guy behind the scenes here, Blake Adams, who makes us look so good every month when we do these webinars, Blake and I discussed doing actual videos for this webinar presentation, and we've determined, based on our research, that the varying download speeds across the people who are joining the webinar is just too much to really burden them with video streaming. So with that said, we are going to do a rather virtual tour of the booth with an up-close look of the specifications, photograph of the product, and so on. In this case, we're going to start with LED Outdoor. These products are small bullet-type floodlights. They range in wattage from 12 to 30 watts. IP rating for outdoors. We are looking to have these in inventory by early August. These products generated a lot of interest at the show, particularly because they are DLC rated, or they will be. They are currently in the DLC testing, and we're assuming that we'll have that in the next week or two. So it's a great, I think, addition to the product family. We have had what we call the small floodlights in the family for quite some time, and the small floodlights... I have to say it generated a lot of interest and so many calls asking if we had an accessory to where this could be mounted directly to the ground. So this product is probably more out for those applications and look at it as an expansion to the MaxLight floodlight line. Speaking of floodlights, we're offering two new additional floodlights. This is our current 25 and 45 where we will pre-install for you the motion sensor. And this motion sensor is an on-off motion sensor, not a high-low. So this is something we have actually been doing for our customers for quite some time, but the volume has grown to where rather than build to order, we're going to build a of order, inventory in stock, packaged with the motion control. We have a set of vapor-proof wall fixtures, a 14-watt light engine in both of them. We are looking at inventory on this in the near future, depending on the interests that we have for the product. We have also here a couple of additional vapor-proof pendant or surface mount fixtures. And additionally, we're adding to the parking garage a 70-watt that will have DLC approval for parking areas. Small adjustable wall packs. This is something that's become very popular with LEDs. You can design, really, you can design great-looking fixtures. And Maxlight has focused on the traditional look for the fixtures. And that's changing now. Not only are we going to continue to offer the traditional look, it's worked out great for us because many of our customers are retrofit-type companies, and their the traditional look fits in right with the look that they have already. But there are opportunities for new construction and major overhauls where a new modern sleeper look would be better suited. And we are looking to come out with these products in late August, early September. Keep an eye out. You'll probably hear about it first through MaxLight.com or the weekly MaxLight Minute. Continuing along those lines, 250-watt replacements for a decorative-type wall pack as well as high-mount area lights. You know, the area light that MaxLight has in the market today has that kind of barn-like traditional look to it. And again, this is an addition to that family with a new sleeker LED type of a look to it. All of these products will have DLC. Top left corner here is a high output floodlight used for stage lighting and sports arenas and the like where you really need a concentrated high output. This is about uh, equivalent to about 1,800 watts of metal halide, over a 1,500 watt metal halide, over 100,000 delivered lumens. So this is a heck of a light. This is not your typical floodlight. Also adding to the wall packs, we're going to have some high output wall packs as well as the second generation of our Maroc roadway slash area light fixtures. The Maroc two or the second gen, these wattages will go up to as much as 150 watts initially. Then we have the ANSI types three initially, but we'll probably expand to types four and five pretty quickly. Omnidirectional lamps. MaxLight has done a great job of putting out a competitively priced omnidirectional A19 lamp. Uh, as you know, we have a 7, a 10, and a 15 watt equal to 40, 60, and 75 watts. 
second generation product is going to have a higher efficacy. We'll continue to have the Energy Star, but you'll see up to 100 watt incandescent replacement, which we're very proud to say. We'll also have this available, as you can see, with the GU24 base. LED PARs and VRs. You know, it's very interesting to me. These LED as a light source is the longest life light source of any product that I've personally worked with in 30 years. But they also have some of the shortest marketable lifetimes of any product that I've worked with in that same 30 years. And what I mean by that is that this is MaxLight's sixth generation of LED PARs and VRs. And I'm going to estimate now that in the next 10 to 14 months, these will be replaced with something that is even brighter or lower energy and or longer life and likely at a lower cost. It's a very interesting time to be in the lighting industry. The next, this next generation of PARs will have a wide range from PAR 1620, PAR 30, PAR 38 slash PAR 40. We'll also have a BR line, a BR 30 in 11 watt, and then fit on this line, a BR 40 in 17 watt. These again are dimple and Energy Star approved. These products are already making their way into inventory. A different type of omnidirectional A19. This is still in the R&D stage, but it's a little exciting. This is a unique look. It is a unique way to put light out 300 degrees. And by the way, an incandescent bulb puts out light at 300 degrees. So we are talking a, a true omnidirectional bulb. This first generation would be about 9 or 10 watts equal to a 60 watt. We're looking at true 2700 Kelvin so that it's a one-for-one -one replacement with 60 watt incandescence. Look for additional information on this. This product may actually yield in some patents on the thermal. We're using some very unique techniques for keeping the LED chips cool, including ceramic substrate. So look for more on this. I thought I would tease you a little bit on that. Post -ops. As you know, MaxLight has come out with a couple of post ops in the last six months. We've heard a hue and cry for additional wattages. If you visited the booth in Las Vegas, you saw that we were debuting an additional 12 and 20 watt to the existing 36 watt product that is offered today. We're looking at 50 and 75 watt metal halide replacement. These products, like a fluorescent retrofit, like the old Timax retrofit, you would bypass the ballast that's currently operating the metal halide lamp. You would cut that power going to that metal halide ballast, put it directly to the lamp socket, and then screw the max light post top lamp in. So it's a pretty easy retrofit. Many utilities consider that a permanent retrofit because you have literally bypassed the ballast. And we're looking at the next two or three weeks for inventory. You'll probably hear about this product first from marketing via the max light minute. What a buzz this product has created at Lightfair. We've been talking about this product as an industry for several years, that these old PLs, the old 2-pin, the low wattage 4-pin, PL lamps really had to go. They have terrible photometrics, particularly in recessed cans, and an LED version just makes perfect sense. MaxLight has come out with a product that will have three different bases. We're looking at the standard 2-pin base. We're looking at a standard 4-pin base, and we're also looking at the new GU24 base. Designed specifically for recessed cans, but if you have other applications for the directional LED PL lamp, it should be suitable for those as well. In this case, like most other retrofits, you have to bypass that fluorescent ballast, put the power directly into that fluorescent lamp socket, and then snap in or twist in the fluorescent PL. We've gotten a lot of feedback from our reps and others who we gave an early look to on this product on Kelvin temperatures that we should be stocking. If you have interest in this product and strong feelings about Kelvin temperatures, share that with your sales manager. So make sure you're represented when we bring these products into inventory uh, over or throughout the month of August. Very exciting product, folks. These will be in set 5 and 7 watts, replacing 13 and 18 watt PLs. A new look for an old lamp type, the G9 base, or it's also known sometimes as a wedge base lamp. This would be MaxLight's second generation of this product. Currently, we have a 2 and a 3, and what we're looking at here is a 5 watt version. Most of our sales on this go to stock and flow distributors, as well as a few OEM customers. So, this will be added to the product line. We're looking third quarter or early fourth quarter for that product category, 2700K, obviously, to replace or to substitute and retrofit out the existing halogen. And these will be both a dimming and a non-dimming version, I'm happy to say. Remember the old uh, Biax lamps, also known as the 2G11 base lamp? 
while uh, there are still millions of fixtures out there, people who are married to the fluorescent because there's a ballast in line and there's really no good retrofit to convert or upgrade them to LED, well, we have right now in r and I'm sharing this with you even though I don't have a ETA date because it was at Life Fair. We had a prototype at Life Fair, and this is a Life Fair review. So I don't mean to tease you here, but it is exciting to me that those millions of fixtures have an opportunity to be upgraded once it gets through our research and development. Let's focus on LED indoor products for a little while. The MaxLite self-driven light bar, also known as the plug-and-play light bar. As you know, we're on our second generation. When we upgraded from our Gen 1 to our Gen 2, we went from a two-wire system to a three-wire system. It was absolutely our intention at the time that we debuted the Gen 2 to have a connector box that matched the three-wire connection, and we had some UL hiccups. In the middle of all that, UL changed the specification. We had to start over again, and, well, I apologize for the delay, but we are looking at third quarter of September. We're cutting steel now, so we're molding our own LED self-driven light bar connector box. This connector box will give you the opportunity to bring your power into your connections. It's very low profile, so you can put it under cabinet, and you can do several runs off of the one connection box. So if you put it in the middle, you can go some to the left and some to the right. We're also expanding the line. As you know, we've increased the lengths that we offer. We have three different light levels, and in the three watt per foot, we have a one foot option for you and several Kelvins. In the nine watts per foot, we have a one watt option, I'm sorry, a one foot option for you in many Kelvin temperatures. And in the, the middle light level, the six watts per foot, we have a six inch or 12 inch We have a 24 and a 48 inch. We have really expanded the line. We are looking now at bringing in a four foot, six watt per foot light bar with a high CRI for the California mandate for 90 plus CRI products. We are looking at end of August, early September timeframe for that. Kudos to the product uh, team for being able to react so quickly to the mandate uh, for California with not only light bars, but high CRI, PAR lamps, R lamps, and keep up the good work, guys. I also want to talk about the Focan. Those of you who know MaxLite for a long time know that MaxLite had the fluorescent Focan, a lot of success in both retail, commercial, and industrial applications. The Focan was a thin, and for CFL, thin is actually one inch thick, thin one inch thick can that was mounted directly to the ceiling, looked like a recessed can with the trim, but actually was just a ceiling mounted can. Dimming was a somewhat of a limitation because it was fluorescent and, you know, frankly speaking, excellent fluorescent dimming is still rather poor dimming. But now with LED and the advances with that technology, we're going to offer an LED version of a faux can. Energy Star approved and dimmable with standard incandescent dimmers. The L-Form product, this is a brand new product, debuted at Life Fair. This product is designed to have an even illumination from one end of the four-foot strip to the next. They snap one into the next where you can actually wire through the fixture. So if you want to say a 16-foot or a 40-foot linear run of unbroken light, these are designed just for that. We're looking at coming out of the gate with 41 and 5,000 Kelvin. Two different light levels for the four-foot, which would be 22 and 44 watts. IP44 for damp locations. These are not to be exposed directly to weather, but they can work fine in subway train platforms and under canopies, places like that. Also debuted at Life Fair is the LED indoor linear parking fixture. We're looking at about 40 watts and 80 watts for two different light levels, four foot lengths. This product is very low profile at 1.8 inches, less than two inches. High lumen output equal to several T12s and with a damp rating for your semi outdoor applications. Round pendant high bay. This is for your indoor applications, but actually has an IP65 wet location rating. So if you wanted to put these at say outdoor dock area, Somewhere like that, that's where we are data testing it now. It's a semi-indoor, outdoor area where trucks are loaded and unloaded, and it's doing a great job compared to the 400-watt metal halide that we took out. It says about 15,000 delivered lumens, high CRI of 80 with 5,000 Kelvin is a nice, crisp, white light. Those of you who factor in SP ratios, photopic, photopic ratios. This is like a 1.96 multiplier. Very high Kelvin temperature with an 80 plus CRI. We also will have a 480 volt option for this. Look for this product 
to be debuted sometime in early August. Take a look at some indoor table and floor lamps, all in LED. We have varying styles, lumen outputs, configurations of this product. These products are manufactured and ready to go. They are UL approved. They are currently built for other markets, and the packaging for these are all ready to go. So it really depends on the interest. If we get a lot of interest, if we had a lot of interest, that light there, and we had hundreds and hundreds of visitors, I think an unprecedented number of visitors at the show. So depending on the interest will dictate which of these models will become stocking models and which would be by special order. Ceiling fixtures. Time for an upgrade. MaxLight has gone through several generations of ceiling fixtures. These are generally Energy Star fixtures for the programs. These are new looks, new feels to the product category. Those of you who focus on indoor residency programs, contractors, ESCOs, those types, give a call to your product manager or your local distributor and find out more about what products will be available. Maybe we can get some stock locally for you. Folks, I really do appreciate your time and spending some time with us to see what MaxLight debuted at Light Bear. Photographs and Excel charts just don't do it justice. It was a beautiful show. Daniel and the rest of the MaxLight marketing team did a great job. There was a buzz around it constantly, and kudos to those people who put it all together. Now, we are going to talk just very briefly about some of the services that MaxLight provides in the lighting industry, starting with MaxLight University, university university.maxlight.com completely free, like any other lighting university or any other university, except that it's completely free. Sign up, you choose your courses, you take your coursework, and you get your degree when you pass. If you have no lighting background, take the Lighting 101 course or recommend it to that friend of yours who was focused on wiring cable and now needs to focus on lighting, particularly with LED and the coming of the LED revolution. We also will do custom product training or technology training for you and yours. If you would want to tap into this service, shoot an email to me or to your local sales manager. And MaxLight's utility rebate service, the best in the industry, folks. I can say that confidently. We will build custom flyers for, for you distributors for stocking our product. Those flyers have your logo, our logo, the utilities logo, explains to the customers how they get in such a great product at a reduced price. We have the rebate finder at MaxLight.com where you can find all the rebate information about in any state for any utility and how it connects to the MaxLight products. We have a custom rebate calculator. We do custom product listings for you. And the newest service that we provide is for those of you who have trouble getting that paperwork done in order to get that rebate from a utility. Joe Pater and his team will actually do the paperwork for you. There's a couple of stipulations. For instance, it should be mainly MaxLight product, 50% or more. And then we will do the paperwork that it needs to be completed in order for the utility to pay out that rebate. So I don't know if any other manufacturer will do that. I know some of you as distributors and, and energy service providers provide that service to your customers, some for a fee, some for free. We are not going to compete with you. We just want to help you and work with you. So tap into us to make that service available to your customers while having us do the paperwork for you. I see that there was a lot of questions about the box, what's the number, what's the dimensions, and so on. Please, let's give them time to get the, the mold cut, the approvals. September or so, all the information will come out. I have a question from Amelia. Amelia, great question. She put it out private, but I will say on her behalf, she's asking, what MaxLite 2014 MaxLite product am I most excited about and why? And, and I want to say those vapor proofs. Those vapor proof uh, wall and tangent mount vapor proof fixtures that we talked about for indoor applications, and I'll tell you why. I take the tech calls at MaxLite. I deal a lot with the public, the end users, the reps, the distributors, and I enjoy that very much. And of all the products that we don't offer, that MaxLite does not have in the line, I get questions about that more than all of them combined. And I'll be very happy to be say going forward, yes, we have these models and these options for you. So I think it was a hole in the line, and I think that fills a hole in the line. And then, of course, the connector box. The light bar, some of you know, that's my baby. I started that project way back at the beginning, six or seven years ago, and I know that the connector box, or the lack of the connector box with the Gen 2, has held back sales, and I'm very happy that that's coming out. And Amelia, thank you very much for the great question. Everyone, thank you so much for your time and attention. Really do appreciate it. Join us next month for the webinar. You'll all get a copy of this presentation sent to you in your email in the next couple of days. Have a great rest of the day.